Hey guys, it's Lena Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is the second video in a little two video set I'm doing about uh, the surveying industry and what's going to happen in this recession that we're headed into because of the COVID 19 virus. Uh, and I wanted to do this second video. The first video was kind of more for senior level staff, for, for business owners or managers. Uh, but I wanted to do a second video specifically for junior staff, so this is kind of assistant surveyor level, LSAT level and below. Um, and I wanted to do two things in this video. Um, I wanted to just give you guys an idea of some things, things you can do in your personal finances. Um, and I'm going to keep that short. I, I don't want to lecture, uh, but there's a few things that I'd like to tell you guys. Um, and then I want to talk about some things you can do if you're out of work. Uh, some things you need to do the next three to six months to make sure that you got a job when this thing starts pulling back out uh, of the recession. And uh, that's really important um, because if you waste the time that you've got this next three to six months, uh, you could you could be out of work for a long, long time potentially. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to do this video is there's a lot of guys today and gals um, like my nieces and nephews that have never been through through anything like this before, never been through a recession, period. Um, and so they're used to uh, a labor market that just isn't going to exist, uh, probably at least for a year, uh, maybe longer. Um, and when you're in a tough, lo tough labor market, um, it's a much different situation to be in as a as an employee. Um, and so by you know I'm a business owner, uh, but my motivations here are, are good. <laughs> Um, and I want to I want to help young people in the surveying and land planning and GIS professions uh, be ready for what's coming next. So let's let's talk for just a few minutes about us. Uh, two or three or four things you guys can do uh, when it comes to your personal finances here. In the like immediately, you need to make these changes probably as soon as possible. Um, and everybody's circumstances are a little bit different, but uh, these are just some general principles that might be able to help you. So let's talk about some things you need to do. Um, if you just got laid off or got your hours cut, um, or you think that's coming in the near future, and chances are it's coming to a huge part, huge portion of our industry. Um, so what can you do on, on the personal finances side? If you've never been through a, a recession, slow down in the survey industry. Okay, so here's the first thing that you need to do. You need to put down your credit cards. Uh, credit cards are the root of all evil. And I, I speak this as somebody that uh, uses credit cards more than he should. Uh, so I'm not trying to be self-righteous here. This is something I, I work on all the time. Uh, but it's really important now. you got to put those down. Uh, the interest rates on those things are going to kill you. And a lot of guys are going to be only making the minimum payments. Um, and basically... When you're only making minimum payments on a credit card, you're essentially just cutting the credit card company a monthly check. And usually you're not paying down your principal, or you're paying it down very small amounts. Um, so you gotta stop spending on your credit cards. Um, and what that means is you can't eat out on your credit card, uh, you can't take vacations on your credit card, and it's a really bad idea to pay utility bills or rent with your credit card. So, you know, I'm trying to think about when would it be okay to use a credit card. Um, if you've got a job and your car breaks down and you need to fix your car so you don't lose your job, that's when it's okay to use a credit card. And that might, that might be the only time when it's okay. So you got to stop spending on your credit cards. If you got to pay your utility bills or your rent with a credit card, that means you shouldn't be in that apartment or that small house um, and you need to look for another place to live. So that's the first thing. Put down your credit cards. Uh, second thing you need to do um, is you need to eliminate unnecessary expenses. Okay, what am I? What do I mean when I say that? Uh, like the very first thing you need to do is quit eating out. So if you still got a job, uh, you should be packing a brown bag lunch, packing a sack lunch. Um, don't eat out on the weekends. Uh, learn to cook. <laughs> cook. Cook from home. Eat canned food if you have to. Um, I would start with the biggest dollar value items here first. Uh, so, you know, cutting your $9.99 uh, Netflix subscription might make you feel better, but it, it's not going to make a real dent. 
Um, so start with your biggest things first. Uh, magazine subscriptions, cable subscriptions, um, you know, phone lines that you don't need, that kind of stuff. So put down your credit cards, eliminate unnecessary uh, expenses. And then the, the last thing I'm going to put up here is uh, probably the hardest. But when things get real serious, uh, you might need to consolidate households or uh, combine bills. So look, if you're a young person and you're renting an apartment for $1,500 a month plus your utilities, which isn't uncommon for somebody in, in the part of California where I live, uh, you got to take a real hard look at that. There's a good chance you're, you're not going to be able to maintain an independent household. Um, so you're going to have to get some roommates or uh, you maybe have to move back in with your folks or with an aunt and uncle or an older brother or sister. And uh, I know that's tough. Nobody likes to do that, but you're going to have to swallow your pride maybe and do that. Uh, that's going to make the biggest difference probably. And a couple things to remember, you know, when you do that, um, and it, it takes some humility, uh, but these are really unusual times that we're in. And uh, when you combine households like that, you're helping whoever you move in with because you're going to split the bills. Um, so it helps two families at once. And I just remember when you do that, um, you know, if somebody's gracious enough to, to allow you back into their home or to allow you into their home, uh, you know, cut the grass, dump the trash, do the dishes without being asked. Uh, make sure you're pay paying your fair share of the bills. Uh, that's really important. It's really important for families to come together right now and everybody to be doing their share. Okay, so those are three things you can do right now. If you got laid off or just lost your job in the surveying industry. All right, so let's talk about if, if you are laid off or you're out of a job, uh, what do you need to be doing the next 90 days to six months to make sure that you're ready to get another job when the recession turns around? So I'm going to just call that job recovery. What are some things you can do to recover a job? Okay. I'm going to give you three or four things. The worst thing you can do right now is sit at home and play video games or watch Netflix for the next six months. Uh, do not squander the time you've been given, uh, especially if you're on unemployment. So, what are some things you can do? Here's the most important thing you can do. You need to invest in your skill set. And uh, you know I've been telling a lot of you guys and gals for a long time, I've been trying to get you to do this, right? So, and you haven't had to because it's been a good job market and you get a raise every year whether you've invested in your skill set or not. And uh, that's just not gonna happen for a while. Could be a year, could be two, could be three. So you gotta do some things to set yourself apart from your competition in the job market. So you might be asking yourself, well, what can I do if uh, I wanna invest in my skill set? So I'm gonna give you some examples. So uh, if you're a field guy, learn CAD. Uh, that's one of my biggest complaints about the union. Union for surveyors is uh, it prevents me from cross training my field people in a lot of circumstances. It doesn't make financial sense to do that. So I got a lot of guys that make somewhere between forty and sixty dollars an hour, and they can't run AutoCAD. That's a bad thing in a job market like this. Uh, so if, if you're a field guy and you're sitting at home, uh, learn some CAD. Uh, there's there's uh, ways to get software. Um, you know, reach out for help. Uh, get get a license of CAD and start learning how to do some work. Volunteer if you have to. If you're an office guy and you have an opportunity, uh, learn a little bit about uh, the field. So if you know a surveyor, you know, that's still working, see if you can go out with him. See if you can borrow some of his older equipment, learn how to run it. Watch YouTube videos about survey equipment and how it works. Okay, so those are a couple things. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, a couple specifics. Uh, get your CST, Certified Survey Technician. It's a really good program. You know, most of you guys out there, junior level, watching this could get your CST level one or two without a lot of effort. Okay. What
with some effort, might be able to get your CST level three. It's a super good program. It's a really good way to invest some time in your own skill set. You're going to learn a lot. Sample exams online. Reach out to me if you're interested in doing that. I will help you. Okay. So get your CST level one or level two or level three if you're ambitious. Um, get your UAV pilot cert. UAVs are not going away, surveyors. So get your UAV pilot cert. It's not a huge level of effort, a couple weeks of studying. Uh, there's lots of good free material out there. It's uh, pretty cheap to take your part 107 exam, your remote pilot certification exam. So get your UAV pilot cert, then learn how to fly a UAV. Get your cert first, then learn how to fly the UAV, not the other way around. Hey, yeah, that's something you can do. For guys that are a little more senior, um, get your LSIT or get off your butt and get your LS. Put the study time in, right? It's a huge effort, but it's worth it. And it's really going to set you apart in a year. Okay? Uh, maybe you've already got your LS. You can think about your CFEDS, Certified Floodplain Mapper. And maybe you want to learn a little bit about GIS. There's some other things that you can do there. Okay? Just, uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase these. I'll give you just a few more kind of generic things. Um, you know, if you're just not in a circumstance where you can go get your CST or your LSIT, those paper credentials really do make a difference in the job market. But if for some reason you're not in a position to do that, um, anything you can do to improve your skill as a writer, surveyors tend to be horrible writers and it's a really important skill. So anything you can do to make yourself a better writer, okay? A lot of that times, a lot of times that means you need to write. Um, and a, a, just a suggestion, Google Scholar's got a pretty good free online database of court cases. You know, get on Google Scholar, read some court cases, just Google land survey. And uh, learn how to do case law research in Google Scholar and then, uh, you know, learn to write some briefs, learn to write some, uh, some case summaries. And there's plenty of stuff online that can help you with that. Uh, but anything you can do to become a better writer, Anything you can learn about business. Surveyors tend to be horrible business people. So read everything you can about business. I'm going to give you a couple resources. Okay. So some of my favorites. Uh, listen to the Econ Talk podcast. It's a good podcast. It's taught me a lot about economics and business. Planet Money from NPR is another good one. And then I'm going to give you this other website, Eight Harvard Business Review. They've got a subscription site, but you can get a few free articles on there every month. Um, it's a great, great place uh, to learn about business, and I highly encourage you, if you can afford the subscription, to do that. Okay, so those are a couple kind of more generic things uh, you can do. Uh, anything you can learn about uh, GIS, okay, or graphic design, I think is helpful. Okay, and I'm just going to give you a couple software programs you can try. QGIS is open source, free. And uh, Inkscape is an open source graphic design software. I've got some videos on my website about both of those. Um, so learn QGIS, uh, learn to do some graphic design in Inkscape, some, some high quality cartography here. Okay, that doesn't cost you anything, you just download the software on the internet. Okay, so invest in your skill set, you need to be doing that. You know, treat it like a job. All right, what are some other things you can do to be ready for the job recovery? I'm going to give you two more things, and then i got to go because my phone keeps ringing. So here's the second thing. Network. Okay, what do I mean by network? Uh, by network, I don't mean ask people for favors. That's not networking. Uh, but what I mean is, you know, if you're a junior, kind of at a, a more junior level, you need to be at your local surveyor association meetings, uh, maybe your local uh, civil engineering association meetings, you know, ASCE, American Public Works Association, uh, in California, it would be California Land Surveyors Association, American Council of Engineering Companies. Um, find out when those meetings are and go. If you're a young person, you probably find somebody to sponsor you and take care of your dinner tickets. Um, but those connections you're going to make there are going to really help you. They're gonna, you're going to learn a lot. 
hopefully. And uh, those are people that might be in a position to get you a job or help you find a job. So a lot of you guys have been too busy for that and you haven't needed to do it, now you need to do it. And if you've been doing it, uh, I commend you because those relationships are going to help you get back to work sooner. Hey, so network. And remember when you're there, you're there to learn. You're, you're there to learn about others and you're, learn to, you're there to help others. You're not there just to take. Okay. If you really want to make good use of those uh, associations, uh, go there and volunteer. Put some time and effort in. That really makes a difference. And if you're more senior, you might think about your local chamber of commerce uh, or similar uh, business associations like that's good too. Okay, and the last thing you need to do is uh, be flexible about the kind of work you're willing to take. Uh, you're probably not going to get the job you want. And you got bills to pay. And, and even if you don't have bills to pay, let's say you're sitting on a pile of savings, you do not want to go two years as a young person outside of the job market. It doesn't look good, it's going to make it really hard to get a job when you jump back in. So be flexible. And what do I mean by that? Uh, you know, if you're a field guy, you might have to take an office job. If you're an office guy, you might have to take a field job. If you're a party chief, you might have to work as a robman. Uh, if you're an assistant surveyor, you might have to take a job as a drafter. Uh, maybe you got to work for an architect or an HVAC company or a landscape design company. Um, you know, maybe you got to work outside of the industry. Uh, if you do, if you got to do that, I encourage you to look at related industries first. Uh, but you know, all the real estate industry is going to be taking a hit. Um, so be open-minded. Uh, you know, anything you can do that's going to teach you about business, especially small business, uh, is going to help you. Uh, you know, if you're in the private sector, go to work in the public public sector. Um, that's going to teach you a whole whole other side of the interest, industry that's uh, that's worth a lot. So be flexible. You know, consider some volunteer work. Um, do not let your skills atrophy at home and do not leave a huge gap in your resume. Get back to work as soon as you can, even if it's not for the money you want or doing the job that you want. Um, it's going to be really, really important. And you'd be surprised how much you learn doing different jobs. Okay, so those, those are three things you can do to get ready for the job recovery. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching the, the videos, the two videos, hopefully you watched them both. Um, reach out to me if there's specific things I can do to help you. And um, if you've got specific learning resources, especially free work, free, free learning resources for surveyors uh, that you would like to share, uh, send me an email and I will make sure I get it posted in the comments to the video on, uh, on YouTube and on LinkedIn. All right guys, thanks.